everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I want to show you how to make a super, super quick and easy apron that you can use for historical stuff, history bounding, around your own house, whatever you like. This is going to be a half apron or like a waist apron that you're going to tie around in the back and it's so easy that this video might be really, really short. So this is a great way to use up some of that stash that you have laying around where you have kind of those random yardages because really all you need is about a yard and a half of fabric. Honestly, you could probably get away with less, especially if you happen to be smaller than me, but I'm going to start with a yard and a half of fabric. We're just using cotton right here. This has been sitting in my stash for I could not tell you how long, but it definitely has that kind of storage smell. I probably should have washed it first, but I'm not going to because it's an apron. So I have pre-washed this ages and ages and ages ago, but again, it's it's been sitting for a while. So anyway, that's a yard and a half long and it is 45 inches wide. And I have measured that for historical purposes, I want this apron to be about this long. Honestly, I didn't measure it. I held it up to myself, saw where the hem was, and was like, yeah, that looks good. So we're going here. I've actually just gone ahead and clipped a little notch in, and we're just gonna get that straight edge. Perfect. Okay, so now this is the skirt of our apron, and this is ties, pockets, really anything else that you need it to be, it's all going to be this. So this we're actually going to go ahead and divide again. I probably honestly don't have enough for pockets unless I cut some yardage out of that, but this is going to be ties. We're going to rip this again and then we're going to sew those end to end to make the ties and the waistband. So my waist tie pieces are now split in two. So I've got two pieces that are the length of my fabric and I am actually going to take one of these. This is personal preference time but I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to divide it in half and cut it in half and that is because I'm just not particularly a fan of a seam right in the center front. I don't think that's very aesthetically pleasing at least for me so I am going to actually make this into three pieces where there will be a center piece and then two other pieces and this is what's going to make up the waist and the ties but we will get into that construction in a few minutes here. So first what I have done here with the long piece and this is really just a test at first to see if I can get pockets out of this because I do really want to patch pockets I think would be super super cute and I don't really want to do it out of a contrast fabric. So I have actually run gathering stitches along the ripped edge up on the top here two gathering stitches so just on the machine I do it on a five millimeter length and I did first mark my center with a pin right here and now I'm going to pull those gathering stitches up because this is going to give me an idea of what the apron is is actually going to look like and if I will have enough fullness if I say cut off six inches on one end to be able to make pockets out of it. I want to make sure that I have that fullness first. If you have a little bit more fabric, again this was a yard and a half, if you have a little bit more fabric then you have room to cut pockets and you can skip this tester step. You can just cut your pockets but I just want to make sure that the fullness is there before I you know cut fabric off that I don't have to lose. So I'm going to pull this up. I will show you what it looks like in just a moment. So this is what it looks like all gathered up. My pin is right here in the center and putting that at the center it definitely feels like it, I could be safe with losing just a little bit. So I am going to cut off I think about six inches about this much. I haven't measured that yet, but about this much. I'm going to cut that off just so that I still have a straight edge. I'm just going to cut it all the way down and I am going to use this little bit here to make a couple of pockets. So I now have my pockets. Well, the pieces for them cut out. They are, I decided to go with six and a half instead of six inches. So they are six and a half inches by nine inches because that should give me plenty of depth for phone, hands, snacks, whatever else you might need to put in your pocket. And I am now going to surge around all of the outsides of these. I really don't have to surge 
anything else because everything else is going to be encased within itself or hemmed or be a selvage edge because actually we're going to just leave the hem of the apron the selvage edge since that's what it is currently and that's great with this fabric. So these are the only things that needs to be surged and that is because on most sides of the pocket everything except the top that is actually just going to be surged folded in and then I'm going to top stitch that to the apron itself. Once you have surged or otherwise finished off your pockets, because you don't have to surge them, I mean, you can have raw edges inside your pockets if you want, if you don't have a serger, or you can overcast them on your sewing machine, you have options. Or you can even turn it in twice, just make sure you cut your pockets a little bit wider if you want a finished edge, and you're going to be turning it in twice. But since I have a serger, I've surged it. I am now going to take the top of the pocket. Well, first I'm going to cut off these little tails and just press it flat. Then I'm going to take the top of the pocket and I'm going to just turn this top over twice, press that and sew that down just along that edge because that's going to be the top. We're finishing that. The other ones then once I have sewn that, they're going to get pressed in and then top stitched to the apron. And where you put your pockets on your apron is entirely a matter of personal preference. Also, honestly, if you wanted to leave the pockets to put on and to last, you can. I personally think it's kind of easier to do it. Honestly, before you've even gathered it, it's going to be easier to do it. Um, but you it's, you know, it's still a flat piece of fabric, you could wait, put your waistband on, tie it in place, see where your hands want to go. And that is a perfectly valid way of marking where you want pockets to go. Just mark where your hands go naturally, draw the little like placement or dots or something for your pockets, and then sew your pockets on in that position. In fact, actually, I might wait to do that too, but I'm at least going to prep these pockets first. My pockets are now prepped. You do especially want to make sure that both of them wind up the same size. So just in case you cut them weirdly or your fabric was shifty or something like that, make sure when you're folding in the sides and doing the tops that you wind up with two pockets of the same size if you want that. I mean, that's what I would recommend. And I have also gone and I've cut one of those waistband strips into two pieces. So I just cut it in half and then we've got the one long waistband strip. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew these end to end with the long one in the center. So short one, then long one, then short one. And that way the seams to join them all together will wind up kind of like around the back, if not in the ties of the waistband, you just, I don't know, I just don't like it center front. So that's why I did this. It's one tiny little extra strip, not a big deal. The other thing that you want to figure out at this point is how far around your waist you want this apron to go. So I figured out I want my apron to go just about to the sides, maybe even about an inch past, but you want to find that measurement. So measure from where you want it to go on your waist, whether that's you're wearing this corseted, uncorseted, etc. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to do it with my uncorseted waist even though I'm probably going to use this corseted and I'm going to measure side to side, find that measurement. And that's going to be important because we're going to mark that length on the apron ties, dividing that total length in two and basically looking at where the center is on the tie and taking half of that waist measurement and half of that waist measurement and marking there so that we can attach the apron skirt part to the waistband. So that's the next step. I am going to go do all of that. I nearly forgot to mention, but before you attach it to the waistband, you also want to hem your sides. So since these were raw edges, I just turned this twice over and sewed down on machine. It was a little annoying because this fabric is not printed on the grain, so that's great. And now what I've done is I have pulled up those gathering stitches that I had originally made on the top of the waist. I don't know if I forgot to mention it or not, by the way, but I did move over 3.25 inches my original center front mark after I cut that six and a half inch thing off of the side so for the pockets so yeah I have a new center front mark and I matched that with the center front of the waistband and then I matched the edges out here I decided to make the apron top 24 inches around so I measured that out 12 made a little mark match the edge and same with over on this side they are now all ready to go and be sewn so after sewing that it is very important that you pet your cat who has usurped your sewing table your very messy sewing table and then do you have something to say no not so much 
Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and turn these into tubes. So you are going to put right sides together, fold that long end together like this, that's very hard to do with one hand, and sew along that edge, all the way along the tube, and when you get to the end over here, you are going to sew up this edge as well, so you're gonna sew like that, I mean, you can start at the edge too, that's totally fine. You can start here, so all the way down here until you get to where the apron connects. At that point, you're gonna stop and skip over where the apron is and do the same thing to the other tube on the other side, and then we are going to turn those with a tube turner. Dora, really? Dora, this is my apron. It's, no, it, it's not a seat. It's not a seat, Dora, I'm working with it. Dora. Now what am I supposed to do? You're just nonchalantly sitting on my apron? Really? While Lion waits here for his afternoon walk? Really guys, really? <laughs> my sewing buddies are not so helpful. Yeah, you heard that. Make sure you clip your corners before you turn your tubes and take out any pins, obviously, if you had any pins in your strap. But then we are going to insert the tube into the strap. I will link to these tube turners if they are still available. Last time I checked, they were kind of hard to find, but they are called fast turn tube turners. I realize there's a glare there, so you can't even see that. Fast turn tube turners. Highly, highly recommend them. And they come with this little wire thing with a little spiral right on the end here. And that goes into this tube. And then you just twist the spiral. Ideally, you want it in the seam. But honestly, it's hard to get the spiral right into the seam. So kind of anywhere is fine. And then you just pull that tube out the other end and untwist your little wire and then pull your tube off of your fabric. To work out the corners on here, I know a lot of people say not to do this, but I honestly just go in with a pin. I try to do as much as possible with my hands and then I just go in with a pin and try and get that exact corner out if possible. You just want to be careful that you don't like pull the actual threads or, you know, break your fabric or anything like that when you're doing that. But I don't need super tight corners on that. That's going to be pretty okay right here. Yeah, that'll be just fine. And now we're going to press all of this flat all the way across on both sides. Once you have pressed the tie portion down, you are going to go ahead and turn under the edge of the portion that is by the waist, the opposite edge, because we want to get that raw edge encased. By the way, you can use really any length of apron ties as long as they go around your waist and have enough room to tie, and any width, I would say probably keep between like three and five inches, but you could probably go a little wider or a skosh narrower, not much. But now that we have pressed this down, we also want to press the other edge if you want. I mean, I find it easier to press whenever I have a seam with gathers. So we'll press that from the right side and then we will just fold this down and cover the seam and pin that in place and stitch in the ditch from the other side. By the way, I apologize for this weird angle, but one way I have found that you can press this gathered seam without actually pressing your gathers is really to steam it. So use your table and your body to press against the side on one side and pull it with the other and then just use your iron to steam that and it will open up that seam very nicely. Ta-da! And at this point the apron is technically done except that we want pockets. So now you pretty much just have to figure out where you want your pockets. We already have these all nicely folded and made. So, you know, do you want them on the outside? Do you want them here? Do, I wouldn't put them too close together. Probably more like about here. You always want to make sure, too, that with your pocket, you don't put it any lower than you can reach. So with my pocket, I could put it down to 
maybe about there if I wanted to. I'm gonna look in the mirror and see what is best, but probably somewhere around there would be ideal. And then you wanna mark where that one pocket is and make sure that the other pocket is even. So even down from the top, even from the side in, etc. And then we can sew our pockets on. We're just going to make sure the edges are folded in and then top stitch here, here, and here here along the edges. And just like that, it's done. We've got our pockets nicely in there so we can put all of our stuff in our apron. I will pop up some footage on screen of me wearing this in a historical setting, or rather a theatrical setting since this is actually my costume for Meg in Little Women. And yeah, super, super easy project. This is honestly a fantastic first time sewing project. For someone who is literally just learning to sew and really wants to make something maybe a little bit more than a pillowcase, this is fantastic because you will do things like gathering, turning a tube, turning a corner, you know, doing a hem, very, very, very simple stuff. And it makes for a really nice, quick, easy stash busting project as well for that random yardage that you might have laying around. Or again, for first time sewers, it's easy to acquire just a yard and a half of cotton fabric. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Angela. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!